when you have followed my channel you will surely know my experiment from say approximately three weeks ago where I was talking about how to make a battery made with aluminum and copper that had to work for many years. This is say the first experiment that I do. Uh, I want to know how quick, how quick aluminum dissolves in sodium uh, hydroxide. So I made a one molar um, solution in tap water and also other solutions with a lower uh, concentration of that uh, substance, sodium hydroxide. And now I'm uh, looking how quick all the aluminum here is, say, solved in that watery solution. And the idea is, of course, that uh, when you want to make a battery in this way, with aluminum and copper, uh, the aluminum electrode must withstand for, say, a few years or so. That's the idea of the battery. So it cannot be uh, in such a way that that aluminum electrode is eaten up within uh, a few days or a few months, etc. And that's why I use these different concentrations, test concentrations of uh, sodium hydroxide. And I've done it in the proper chemical way uh, using, say, the molar ID. One molar is 40 grams uh, at one liter of water, in my case tap water. Um, and so we go on and on, more and more diluted uh, sodium hydroxide. And of course, when this is done, I want to test whether such a, I think a low concentration of sodium hydroxide in water will still be a good electrolyte to make that battery of aluminum and copper. Anyway, another experiment that I did was making concrete, mixing concrete with uh, sodium chloride and then let it harden out and in, at the same time two electrodes are immersed in that concrete and that is iron or steel, weak steel and copper. And of course, more or less logical that we get a potential difference. I had not expected that, in this case, when the concrete is completely cured and in a certain way dry, there must still be a, move, a movement of electrons between, between the two electrodes because I measure a voltage and even a quite constant voltage. So uh, that's why I call this the Cuprum iron concrete battery. It delivers 0.1 volts. That's of course not very high anyway. You see it on the meter. The voltage. Um, I'm now on the 0 0.03 milliampere scale. There is say, a current flowing out of this in a certain way dry. Of course, never completely dry. There's moisture. When it was completely dry, the, I, my idea is that there, in that case, no electrons could flow. But perhaps I'm wrong. Need study. Um, anyway, so now I go to the 3 volt scale of my meter, and here you see 3 volts, 1 volt, 0 0.5 volts, 0, 0 0.25 volts. Any way. What's the current that it can give? Well, that must be very low. Anyway, um, this was more or less what I wanted to tell. Thanks for watching. By the way, already four minutes and that's 
perhaps a quite long time. The good idea could be to moist to make the concrete again moist by immersing here this electrode, concrete electrode, into water. I'm going to do that now. And of course, uh, I only have 15 minutes for my camera, and I will surely not. Um, use that complete time. I think that now um, water is slowly sucked up by the concrete. That means perhaps that the current can be can flow more easily. Is that true? I really don't know. Um, I'm watching this during the day and well when I have uh, new results of this experiment, I will surely uh, give it in the text box or in the comments section. So, again, thanks for watching. In a certain way, this very, very simple battery made of concrete, table salt, and a copper and a steel or iron electrode works. So, hope for the future.